appreciation for them. Yes, sir. Thank you all. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome you to this afternoon's proceedings. Today we honor a gentleman, a man, a stalwart, not only in the, this community, but throughout the island. Firstly, before we actually get into the public tribute section, the South Hill community, uh, some months ago, found it fit to honor both the Honorable Hubert Hughes and Mrs. Hughes by presenting to them a plaque. That plaque is now erected and is stationed just outside Greg's trucking in an area that can be seen for persons both co coming and going from the South Hill area. At this time, Mrs. Hughes wants to say a few words regarding that plaque and to show her appreciation to the South Hill community for honoring their contribution to this community. Everybody knows, everybody knows that. I'm not the talk at my house, he's gone. <laughs> so the words are to you. A big thank you to the South Hill community for honoring us on his birthday last year. We've only just put the plaque out there. And I must say, we tried our best. I did the teaching, he did the talking. So, on behalf of the family and in remembrance of him, I say a big thank you to the South Hill and Blowing Point communities. May God bless us all as we walk past and see it. And this afternoon, I want to thank all of you for your support. God bless. And now I invite the Reverend Wilmoth Hodge to bless us in this particular section regarding the plaque that was given to both uh, Mr. and Mrs. Hughes. Good afternoon, everyone. Special good afternoon to Mrs. Norma Hughes, and in particular, the Hughes family. And to extend to you once again, my deepest condolences. I now invite us to bow our heads in prayer. God of all mercies, the author and the finisher of our faith, we come into your presence this afternoon to give you thanks. And in particular, to give you thanks for the life of our departed loved one, the farmer 
Honorable Chief Minister of Anguilla, Mr. Hubert Benjamin Hughes, we thank you for his life of service in the island of Anguilla and in particular to the people of Blowing Point and South Hill. We pray that you will bless these grounds this afternoon and in, in particular the plaque that has been placed in memory of him. We pray, Father, that it will stand out in this community to remind all who live and pass through this community of his service to them in the Anguilla House of Assembly and also as the leader of this country. We ask your blessings upon it. And we ask your blessings upon this community. And may his legacy continue to live on in the minds and the hearts of all the people of these two communities. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Hodge, and thank you, Mama, for those words. Ladies and gentlemen, we move straight into the tribute program. And as I have done before, I will do again to say welcome. Welcome, friends and family, as we honor your friend, your boy, your man a leader who has done so much for the community. Before we invite those persons who will say something on his behalf, if you are here today and wish to render a tribute, you can still do so, even though you may not have called in. Uh, Chris Lynn and Erlin are around. I'm here, you can give me your name, and you will have that opportunity to say something this afternoon. But at this time, I invite Pastor Hugo Brooks to open with prayer. Can we bow our heads? Heavenly Father, we give you thanks. We give you praise, glory, and honor. We thank you because we know that even now that you are here, we thank you for the assurance in your word that tells us that we serve a high priest who is touched by the feeling of our infirmities. So Father, even now as we bring before you the Hughes family, we pray for their strength. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you be their sustainer. You will keep them. You will strengthen them in the days ahead. We pray, Lord, for this gathering here this evening. We pray for each one, Lord, that is going to share, Lord, of their memories about Mr. Hughes. We pray, Father, that you would grant them utterance. And I pray that the words that will be spoken would bring strength to the family. We commit this gathering before you and we pray that your name will be honored and glorified in Jesus precious holy name amen thank you pastor brooks ladies and gentlemen even though we are met in this time of bereavement we're also celebrating so even though we are sad let us reflect on the things that made us laugh when we are around our brother, our friend, so that we can celebrate his life and enjoy the legacy that he's left behind. We invite Reverend Hodge again to give us some words of comfort. Words of comfort coming from our Bible, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ.
I just want to open the word for us this afternoon with a reading from John chapter 14, verses 1 to 6 and 27. The words of Jesus. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go and prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again, and I will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may also be. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth. and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not let them be afraid. I want to again extend uh, on behalf of my family, as well as the extended church family of the Methodist Church in the Anguilla Circuit, which includes our acting superintendent minister, the Reverend E. Dunstan Richardson, our deepest condolences to you, Mrs. Hughes, the wife of the late Honorable Chief Minister of Anguilla, Mr. Hubert Benjamin Hughes. Heartfelt condolences are also extended to his children, grandchildren, his siblings, and the other members of his family. May God continue to grant you his peace, comfort, and strength during this time of your bereavement. I want to offer to you, Mrs. Hughes, the family and friends of Mr. Hughes, words of comfort. as I was asked to do. However, I believe that words will not be enough to soothe your aching hearts at this time. And I'm certain that there are others as well in the community at large who are also mourning the loss of Mr. Hughes. Therefore, I wish to commend unto you something more than words this afternoon. I wish to commend unto you the presence of the one who in his final address to his disciples before his ascension comforted them with the words, and lo, or remember, I am with you always, even to the close of the age. Matthew chapter 28, verse 20. 
I want us to rest assured this afternoon that God's presence is always with us. He is with us now in the person of the Holy Spirit. Indeed, at a time such as this, we can exalt with the hymn writer. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and the griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. I find no better words to offer you comfort at this time than the words of Jesus himself. Let not your hearts be troubled. Jesus was a young man in the prime of his life, full of potential. And one from whom the people expected much. And so while Jesus spoke to his disciples about the kingdom of God and the coming of the Holy Spirit, they were yet questioning him about the establishment of an earthly kingdom. Even after his resurrection and before he ascended to heaven. In the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 6. They ask him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom of Israel? They were thinking about an earthly political kingdom while Jesus was commissioning a spiritual kingdom on earth. The despondent disciples walking the Emmaus road after his death reminisced in Luke chapter 24 verse 21. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. You see, Israel was colonized by Rome. And there, was, there were those who expected that Jesus was going to re-establish the throne of David. And so, they were bitterly disappointed when he started talking about leaving them. One of the things that people in general find it hard to do is to accept the fact that God has a plan for each of us. On this earth. But there also comes a time. When those whom. We put our faith and confidence in. Will also have to depart from us. I am certain. That many of you here this evening. Would have been disheartened. And disappointed when Mr. Hubert Hughes stepped out of the arena of politics. Some of you felt that he had much more to contribute to the development of Anguilla. The fact is that Mr. Hubert Hughes left the political arena. And the fact is that he has now transitioned from this life into eternity. And each of us will someday transition as well from this life. This evening, those of us who are left behind should not unnecessarily be burdened with the what ifs. And if only things had worked out another way. This afternoon, we are here to give thanks for what God has done in and through him. In John chapter 16 verse 7, Jesus spoke to his disciples and others about his departure. He told them that it was imperative that he should leave them. In other words, he was saying to them that it was absolutely necessary that he should leave. Because if he did not leave, the Holy Spirit would not come. 
one of the Holy Spirit's designations is that of comforter. Jesus was leaving because in the flesh, he was restricted from being all things to all people at the same time, all times. Because he could only be in one place at a time in the flesh. As with the case of Lazarus, he could not be in Jerusalem and Bethany at the same time. When his friend Lazarus was gravely ill and needed his attention. So his leaving meant that the Holy Spirit would come. And that God through the Holy Spirit would be able to minister to the needs of all people everywhere at all times. And so this afternoon... That is the assurance that we have had from Jesus. Let not your heart be troubled. That is the assurance that we have had from Jesus. Remember, I am with you always, even to the close of the age. God can fulfill all expectations. He can fulfill our expectations of Christ through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came so that we, performing under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, can do even greater things than what Christ himself did. Didn't he say that? Those around Jesus had great expectations of him. They expected much more from him. But they did not know that the Holy Spirit who would come to them would give them a peace in this world that would surpass all human understanding. Norma, I say to you this afternoon, I say to you, Hayden, I say to you, all of the children of Mr. Hughes, the grandchildren, I say to you that Jesus sent the Holy Spirit so that you can experience a peace that surpasses all human understanding. For the Holy Spirit has no limitations. And there are no territorial boundaries when it comes to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit would not only give individuals the assurance that God is with them. The Holy Spirit would unite God's people together with cords of love that can never be broken. While speaking to his disciples about his pending departure in John chapter 14, Jesus saw their perplexity and he knew that speaking about his departure was devastating news for them. And so he sought to relieve their anxieties with the words, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. This evening, as we mourn the passing of one whom we love, we do not mourn as those who have no hope. Mr. Hughes assured us, he assured us before his passing that he had made his peace with God. Therefore, let not your hearts be troubled. God sent his spirit to comfort us. We ought also to comfort one another. The Spirit of God is the Spirit of unity who comes to us in the presence of unity as he did on the day of Pentecost. Had there not been unity and had there not been forgiveness and reconciliation, the Holy Spirit would not have come on Pentecost. 
The best tribute that we can give to Mr. Hughes this afternoon is the spirit of unity. The best tribute that we can give to Mr. Hughes is not mere words, but a commitment to build up one another in love rather than to tear each other down. Therefore, let us love and comfort one another. Let us give ourselves for the good of others, even as Christ gave himself for us and for the world. Though Mr. Hughes' body remains upon the earth, we are assured this evening that he is indeed in the presence of the Lord. For to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. May you continue to experience God's presence at this trying time in your lives. And may the soul of Mr. Hubert Benjamin Hughes and the souls of all the faithful departed live on in the eternal presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Hodge. I didn't quite hear some, a lot of the amen in the congregation a while ago. Amen? Amen. 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 For those of you who miss church on Sunday, you get your message today. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for you to give your tribute in song, speech, however. And to kick things off, we invite Sharon to do her tribute. Now, appreciation as she comes would be nice. When you're weary, mm -hmm, feeling small, mm -hmm, when tears are in your eyes, I'll dry them all. I'm on your side. Oh, when times get rough And friends just can't be found Like a bridge over troubled water I will lay me down Like a bridge of a troubled water I will lay me down When you're down and out When you're on the street When evening falls so hard I will comfort you, I'll take your part. Oh, when darkness comes, and pain is all around, like a bridge over troubled water. I will lay me down like a bridge of a troubled water. I will lay me down. Sail on, silver girl. Sail on by. Your time has come to shine. All your dreams are on their way. 
see how they shine. Oh, and if you need a friend, I'm sailing right behind like a bridge over troubled waters. I will ease your mind like a bridge over troubled waters. I will ease your mind. I will ease your mind. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Ladies and gentlemen, you notice these five handsome gentlemen up here. You know who they are? Yes, Roots sir. Bingy. So let's give it up for them. Uh, we thank them for doing this service this afternoon. Next, we have a tribute by Brother Jerome Harrigan. Afterwards, I'm going to put Shanoi on note, and Sandra on note. Yeah. Thank you, and good afternoon, everyone. Pleasant afternoon, and our sincerest, sincerest condolences to Mrs. Hughes and the family of Mr. Hubert Hughes and the entire Angolian community. The, the evening of Friday, May 7th, 2021, I was preparing to join an online meeting with some colleagues when my wife and I, on, on the stay-at-home restrictions with the rest of Anguilla, received the jarring news that the revered former Chief Minister, the Honorable Hubert Hughes, had passed away. We were arrested by the stunning news and could do nothing more that evening but sit in the living room in the semi-darkness for well over an hour and reflect on what we knew of the legacy of the man. I distinctively recall some of the few words that fell from my lips. He was a man among men. A few hours later, I saw the same words posted on social media by one of our prominent Anguillian women, a man among men. And you know that's probably the simplest yet most profound evaluation most of us Anguillians can affirm of Hubert Benjamin Hughes. As a gentleman and politician, a political figure, Hubert Hughes was different. He was deeply Anguillian. He unswervingly believed in his country and was always willing to stand persuasively for her and her people. That was the hallmark of his remarkable leadership. We can recall countless forum where Mr. Hughes would ask to speak at the drop of a hat and he would draw from a wellspring of deep knowledge, persuasion and wit that will cause anyone who is not familiar with him to think that he had re rehearsed his speech for weeks. Whether he was speaking of the ancient Roman Empire, the British Foreign and Commonwealth Office, or the plantocracy, he always had a couple ears full for you to digest. Being the outstanding orator he was, Hubert was the man Hubert the man would address topics of history, politics, and religion. He addressed them like a Harvard University professor. He was a professor indeed, by life's experiences and challenges. To me, what was most outstanding of him as a human being was his humility in finding the unpretentiousness in holding meaningful conversation with those of the highest to the lowest caliber. He seemed to be the epitome 
of a people's person. Hubert Hughes genuinely loved people. He had a couple, I have had a couple of occasions to sit with Mr. Hughes at his home, like many of us, and share interesting conversation with him. He made you to be more stronger, to more stronger develop the virtue of listening. And his wife, Norma, always is a gracious host. At the ordination of my current church ministry post, the then government representative was not present for some reason. However, Mr. Hughes was asked to say a few words and needless to say, he competently executed the part. He was that kind of man one is made to remember with high regard. Last night while I was preparing this tribute in honor of Mr. Hughes, for the first time I pulled up from the Facebook a recording and listened to some of what he had to say and on that occasion in July 2017. He said, and I quote, the church must play a a firm role in the state. The church must guide the state. The church should never compromise with wrongdoing. The church should lead the community and should not be fearful of doing that job." Unquote. And I want to say thank you for the reminder and affirmation, Mr. Hughes. May you be richly rewarded for the work that you have done. We were gladdened to hear from his own lips not very long ago that Mr. Hughes had personally accepted Jesus, the one Son of God, as Savior and Lord of his life. That completed the real measure of the man. On behalf of my wife, Ruthlyn, our family, church family, and our ministries, we extend sincere condolences to the Hughes family, in particular, Teacher Norma the children, the grandchildren, and the entire community of Anguilla. May you find continual support, comfort, and strength in the strong arm of our Lord. God bless. Thank you, Brother Harrigan. On that note, I wish to acknowledge the presence of our Chief Minister, And also for those persons who came in while the proceedings had already started. Ladies and gentlemen, we do have some refreshments for you so that you can refresh yourselves and mingle after this evening. So don't think you're just here and you're going to go home, but you're going to stay around, have something to eat, something to drink, mingle and chat as we remember our departed brother and friend. At this time, I'm going to call on Winston to do a tribute. And after Winston, we'll have Mr. Oliver McDonough. Winston. <laughs> Good afternoon to each and everyone. I just would like to say that I didn't have a prepared speech, it was approached this afternoon, but all in all, I just feel good to be here. So it be that on behalf of Norma and her beloved uh, family, I'll say my condolences goes to all of you. I'd like to say that Hubert has been a friend of mine for many, many years, all the way back while in the States. And it'd be that even when I got back here, we were very closely knitted and talked a lot, strategized a lot, even while I was in the States. And I would say that Hubert has counseled me in so many different areas in which I am grateful for. Today was a day in which it felt so good to observe throughout the entire island the love that has been displayed for this great man, Mr. Hubert 
Benjamin Hughes. The love that was, has been expressed is one that I will always remember from the school kids from each school throughout this island, through the old, the young, waving flags, just revered this gentleman of great measure. So I'll say again on behalf of Norma, Craig, Hayden, and his entire family, this beloved family, my condolences to all of you. God bless you. Thank you, Winston. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I, I'm somewhat stuck in the past a little, but I guess too it's because our brother Hubert Hughes was chief minister. However, we've moved on and we now call our head of state premier. So my apologies, but again, akin to another great stalwart, your predecessor. Honorable Premier, members of cabinet, teacher Norma, friends and family, good afternoon. We pray first. At this time, I would like to join in to extend my deepest condolences to the Hughes family and especially Teacher Nama. We pray that God, the Lord Grace, continues to comfort you in these times of your loss and beyond. Hubert Benjamin Hughes, most of you would associate me with Hubert Hughes through politics. But Hubert Benjamin Hughes actually is my family. And Hubert Benjamin Hughes comes from the same family tree that I came from, and most of us here in this gathering today. He's from Long Bay, and the extended family of Long Bay went to South Hill, Blowing Point, West End, and perhaps further. I call him Chief. Chief was my mentor, my father-like figure, my political idol, I've looked up to him with great admiration and respect for his political commitment, dedication, and determination he had demonstrated. We all here can agree that he is only, he is one of the only politicians in Anguilla and perhaps the region that made the ultimate sacrifice for his country by spending his entire life fighting for political advancement of his people. This evening, although all, this evening, all thoughts of writing a great speech about this great man, a man amongst men, I can subscribe to that, and the work he has done has been driven clearly out of my mind. I could have taken up hours, if not days, recounting on all that I know of human Hubert Benjamin Hughes' long, brilliant political career. But I felt that the example he has demonstrated with his unearning historical knowledge of the colonial powers and, the pol and, and politics which he has shared with us has certainly laid a foundation for the political advancements of the citizens of Anguilla. Hubert Benjamin Hughes believed in national government. This was relevant then and more so now than ever. He believed this was the best way to ensure the true nation building and political advancement. This is what he fought for. This is his legacy, which is far from complete. 
As I've always said, the early intervention or implementation of political, a party politics, I should say, in Anguilla has contributed to the lack of meaningful and sustainable economic development for its citizens. Even if all my thoughts of writing a legacy story has not vanished from my mind, on hearing all the condolences and tributes over social media and radio and now seeing this gathering, they would have vanished by then. I could feel not I could feel I could not spoken connectively or coherently for the reason that I feel so sad, so depressed, so forsaken over his passing. Over the last decade, we have seen many great Anguillians, colleagues, great leaders pass on, such as Ronald Repser, Alberto Hughes, Sir Emil Gums, colleagues such as Iwandi I Gums, Rasby Gums, Rasby Brooks. Now our beloved brother, our uncle, our cousin, our friend, our family, our political leader has now closed his eyes. Sir, your job is done. May you now be welcome in the kingdom of our creator. Due to the limit time and the inconsequence of my own ability to do justice or to speak in the manner I would like I would have liked to have done, which would have truly represent what I have experienced and learned from him. From what I have seen and hearing, it may be fair to say, no words can recount his unchallenged achievements, nor his love he has for his people and his country. And we love him too. We will surely miss him. We will always love him and remember sir. I remember you, sir. This gathering of farewell and thanksgiving and the week of events in honor of Hubert Benjamin Hughes, showered with eloquent speeches and tributes, speaks of him as he deserves to be spoken of. The question tonight is when are we going to start honoring our leaders and heroes while they are alive? We all should have learned from the old adage, give me my flowers while I'm alive. And today, I'm happy to say, and I was happy to be part of the South Hill Blowing Point community for recognizing the contribution that Hubert Benjamin Hughes have made to the Road South and Blowing Point community and Anguilla in general by honoring and celebrating with Hubert Benjamin Hughes on his last birthday right here on this very same ground. It would be remiss of me not to mention the person who was responsible for not only suggesting the idea, but very much instrumental in making it happen. That person is no other than Leon Lake, and he must be thanked. Leon was also fully responsible for getting the main southern road to West End Road, or Albert Hughes Road, bears his name. If it was not for COVID-19 pandemic and the chief falling ill, that event would have been much, much, much bigger. I think Hayden can testify to that. <laughs> it was huge plans. Last page. Last page. Last page. It's going to be a little longer. His journey, his legacy doesn't have to end here. That is just another path. One that we all must take. There's still hope. He have laid the foundation. 
we must now continue the fight to ensure that we build a better Anguilla for generations to come. Today's memories with Chief Linger inside of me, without deleting any details, we all here can agree that Hubert was a man you can rely on. You can call on any time for advice, mentorship, or pretty much any and everything. In the latter days of his political career, I was fortunate to have been a part of his 2010 government. I had the pleasure to be up close and see how he operated. He was relentless. He was determined. He was charismatic. He was flamboyant. He was very professional in his duties. He was highly knowledgeable, and he was a very skillful politician. He earned the respect of all his colleagues, both home and abroad. I've had the opportunity to travel with Chief in public and in private capacity. We had stayed in the same room, sleep in the same bed. The first time we slept together, please, <laughs> don't get the wrong ideas here. <laughs> Don't get the wrong ideas. So we slept together. As you know, he's always telling stories. So he began to tell me a story. And in the middle of the story, for the first time, I noticed he fell asleep. And shortly after that, he began to snow and snow and snow louder and louder and louder. You can imagine how I feel. I didn't begin to imagine how Teacher Norma feels. <laughs> so I do know that he is, um, we're very close, very, very close. And as I say, if I stay here, I can tell you, every, you know, all week. History will recall Hubert Benjamin Hughes as one of Anguilla's longest serving parliamentarians or politician. That goes along with, uh, with his accomplishments and the sacrifice they have made to Anguilla and the region. Today, I still feel worried for the future of Anguilla, for the unfinished stupendous work still pending and incomplete. And unless we unite together as one people for the common purpose of nation building and political advancement for our country and its citizens, then I'm afraid we have not only failed Honorable Hubert Hughes, we have failed our elders, and we have failed our future generations. May soul continue to rest in perpetual peace. Thank you. Um, Mr. McDonough, Oliver, you're so engrossed in this speech you lost your phone. <laughs> all right. Ladies and gentlemen, we also have the support of the Premier's Cabinet, we have uh, Honorable Kyle Hodge, Honorable Deanne Kentish Rogers, and Honorable Quincy Marie, who was here earlier. Um, so again, we thank you for your support and being here. The Honorable Hayden Hughes is here, but he's in another capacity today. But uh, he's here. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we continue. And again, I would like to remind you that, yes, we would want to uh, you'd want to keep to the time limit as much as possible uh, so that we can get as many persons in this afternoon. We're going to have a gentleman you know by the name of Pow, Mr. John Leake, who's the CEO and founder of ACAN. And you're going to tell us what ACAN is about and then quickly move into your tribute. Afterwards, we'll have Mr. Elbert Hughes, Avis Clark, if she's here. Yeah? No, okay. Pau, ladies and gentlemen, give it up. Good afternoon to everyone. Yes, sir. It's a pleasure to be here to make a special tribute. I do not want to be ungrateful to God. In 2006, I saw the need for a support group for Anguilla for HIV and AIDS and chronic disease. And through that journey, I had a lot of struggles. 
And 2006, when I formed that support group, if it was not for the Honorable Benjamin Hughes, deceased, there would not be an Aiken because he was not recognized. And he did make the effort to make sure that the organization was recognized. And today we are going in our 15 years anniversary. When I look at the Honorable Deceased, there's so much being said about his legacy, what he has left. But today, he has left lessons learned. And the question is, where are we going from here? Are we going to take some of the legacy and put it into action that there can be a better Anguilla? There's a lot of backdrop, but throw it on. We can make it by the grace of God. And I want to say this evening that I don't really want to be too long. But Teacher Norma, you've been a pillow. I know he will be missed. But by the grace of God, you too can make it on. Because you can sit always that through it on, you too have learned to trust in Jesus. And you too have learned to depend on his word. And but before I close, there's so much today was said. And I said today, when I look at what took place today, I must say, this was a lot of respect of the honorable deceased. And I trust and hope that when the time will come where we say, when he, say, where we say when he goes down, I will say, yes, he has really gone. But I trust and hope that we will put some of his legacy in place to put Anguilla forward. May God bless you all. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Lake. After Mr. Hughes, we'll have a tribute being done by Teacher Janice on behalf of Avis Clark. Good evening to everyone. Premier and other members of the House of Assembly, family, friends. I'm going to take you back um, about 60 years to the mind of a teenager. Perhaps you'll know who the person is when, I, when I'm finished. As a teenager, I was thrilled to listen to the speeches of the late Honorable Hubert Benjamin Hughes. And over the years, he was one of the men in the community whom I admire and always respected. His wide knowledge of um, history and regional and global affairs was admirable. He was undoubtedly one of those persons who was genuinely interested in the development of Anguilla and his young, young people in particular. He always encouraged young Anguillians to develop themselves so that they could contribute to the development of the island. In the early 1960s, I was able to listen to some of his speeches delivered by the late Hubert Benjamin Hughes. Most of you know that I have never been actively involved in politics. Although I'm keenly interested in what goes on in the island, I listen, and I listen. My one and only active involvement was in a period in 1961-1962, when I posted a handwritten message on the trunk of a tree explaining why people should vote for Mr. Hughes. My effort was in vain, as it was many years after that that he was first elected to serve the people. I grew up not very far from here. I lived just over there, and Hubert lived over there. And he traversed the road, going to the hill several times, looking at the sea. He was a sailor as well. As a youngster, I took care of animals, including cows. An accident with one of my cows occurred just before Mr. Hughes was due to return to the Uni United Kingdom. A choice had to be made between my staying in Angola to take care of animals and to continue working in the construction industry with another cousin, Mr. Frederick Richardson, 
Many of you may not know that I, before I left here as a teenager, I could lay blocks, plaster walls, and, and so on. So my mother consulted Mr. Hughes. And in his authoritative tone, he said, let the boy go to England and go to school. So in March 1962, I sailed to England under the care of Mr. Hughes. That journey to the United Kingdom determined my career path. I completed my studies and returned to Angola in 1974 to take up a position at the Valley Secondary School, now the Albany Lake House Comprehensive School, as a graduate teacher. I am grateful to Mr. Hughes for his encouragement, as uh, not only myself benefited, but I think Angola benefited. The doctor there, I taught maths. <laughs> and I often wondered, you know, had they gone to England, what would I have done? Had I stayed in the construction industry, I might have had um, some apartments and be very rich. <laughs> but I'm still happy with the path I took. So I want to um, express my condolences to Teacher Norma, all of the children, and the extended family, and may the soul of Hubert Benjamin Hughes rest in eternal peace. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hughes. Seems as though that um, even though you are happy with your chosen career path, you're saying that you didn't get rich. <laughs> well, don't worry. You made a very worthwhile contribution, and for that, we thank you. And that's why Angolan people found it to honor you during their celebrations. So we have teacher Janice, who is going to be, well, almost the, the trinity, because she's representing herself, Avis Clark and Ingrid Richardson. To the memory of the Honorable H. B. Hughes by Avis. Mr. Hughes knew that he was special to my family and me. Some time ago, when I was constructing my home, Mr. Hughes gave me the material or the lumber for the roof. When I was having problems with my eyes, he gave me the funds to have my eyes looked after. Some time ago, when he went away, I stayed with Teacher Norma. When he returned, she told him that I was there. He said not a word because it was okay to him. One of my daughters lived with the Hugheses for three years. I was in St. Kitts sick, and I think she got caught. And teacher Norma went down, took her up, brought her to her home, and she spent three years living with them. I, I supplied Mr. Hughes with papas and noni which were recommended to him for his health. <clears throat> Mr. Hughes <clears throat> was someone I looked up to and respected. He was like a father figure to me. I will surely miss you, my chief minister, and uh, I'll see you again on that great day. Rest now, you did your best. Your task is over. You deserve your rest. The other one is shorter. This is by Ingrid Heiliger Richardson. My friend, our chief minister, was the best of the last. He will surely, mi I will surely miss our evening chats and laughs. So, honorable chief minister, continue to rest in eternal peace until we meet again in the seat by and by. My condolences to Teacher Norma, the children, and the grandchildren. Well, I couldn't have read on it because I didn't know you were going to want to. I wrote this some time ago, just had it written. It's, wow, it's always very difficult to say so long a goodbye to people whom you knew all your life. This is one of those difficult times. We knew our uncle for all our lives. <coughs> From when we were younger 
and her mother, his sister, Mama, and Tai would cook that linseed, which, by the way, she taught me to cook as well. He taught it to her how to cook the linseed, and she taught me. Many times I overcooked it so the milk couldn't do it, come, couldn't do anything. I said, try to be quick before Mama come and see that. <laughs> and he would make a rough. He know he wasted his linseed. Mama, she would cook the linseed for his breakfast and then prepare his dinner or supper, wash and iron those sailor clothes to take on the next trip across the Caribbean. It was a joy for our mother to take care of her youngest sibling for many years. One, our uncle was one person who always requi required of, to be in a book. And that book, even if it was only a Bible, he would say, go read a Bible that I'm going to do. The biggest Bible I ever saw was when he came from England. And to me, all he brought back were books. And I used to hear about the Apocrypha. And it's there, I read the Apocrypha in a big family Bible. I know it's still over there. You got it? I'm going to take it from you. He goes, no, so. <laughs> <laughs> And he also had the record with the um, speech. Black um, historian. I can't remember. Somebody, I think I know who, who had borrowed it and never got it back. He never liked to see children wasting time because he said Satan finds work for idle hands to do. He said you should be successful at whatever you do, and hard work harms no one. When you're working, you wouldn't get into trouble. He felt he had to look out for his nieces and nephews and always get to find something to do. Stop being idle. We thank him now, because then we thought he was too hard on us, but we saw that he meant it for our benefit. He, you told us all. Right, can I make look my own writing? Oh, you told us all you made it right with your Lord. And that is what we wanted to hear. He told us that. And one night I went, he said, I just want all my family to come and see me. I want all my family to come. And that's when we had the breakfast. After that, after he said he wanted all his family around him, we had the breakfast. <clears throat> God saw that you were not able to fight any longer. So he sent his angels to take you into, unto himself. We say so long, and we'll see you in the rapture. Until then, Uncle, take your rest. May God continue to bless you. Thank you, Teacher Janice. I would like to put Madge Connor, Marie Lang, Grace Christopher on note that your tributes are coming up next. At this time, we invite Melodious Praise to render the second song for the evening. So let's put your hands together for them as they come to do their tribute. Good evening to all. On behalf of Melodious Praise and our families, we extend our heartfelt condolences to Teacher Nama, Honorable Hayden Hughes, and the rest of the Hughes family. We want to thank you for sharing Mr. Hughes with Angola for all these years. And we pray that your heart will be touched with this song. Tell me of a home far beyond the sky. Oh, they tell me of a home far away. Oh, they tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise. 
Oh, they tell me of an on cloudy day. Oh, the land of cloudless day. Oh, the land of an on cloudy sky. Oh, they tell me of a home. Bombing storm clouds rise. Oh, they tell me of an on cloudy day. Oh, they tell me of a king in his beauty there. And they tell me that my eyes shall behold where he sits on the throne that is whiter than snow. That is made of gold. Oh, the land of cloudless day. Oh, the land of an uncloudy sky. Oh, they tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise. Oh, they tell me of an uncloudy day. Tell me that he smiles on his children there And his smile drives their sorrows away And they tell me that no tears ever come again In that lovely land of all cloudy days Oh, the land of cloudless Up and on cloudy sky Oh, they tell me of a home Where no storm clouds rise Oh, they tell me of an on cloudy day Oh, the land of cloudless day Oh, the land of an on cloudy sky storm clouds rise. Oh, they tell me of an uncloudy day. Oh, they tell me of an uncloudy day. Um, you could take another three minutes and do another song, you know. Huh? Well done. Let's hear it again for melodious praise. Woo, 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 woo. Really melodious. Yes, sir. You know, when Gerdia called to indicate that the group is going to do a tribute, she wasn't sure if they were going to, well, they, they wanted to do a tribute, but wasn't quite sure whether they will have music or musicians or anything like that. But you know what the saying is, all things work together for those that Love the Lord. And the Naya Bing, the Roots Bingy provided the perfect accompaniment, <laughs> accompaniment for that. Wonderful, wonderful. We're going to skip. We're going to have another speech at this time. I call some names. Madge Hodge. Madge, Con sorry, Madge Connor. Marie Lang. You're here. All right. I show your appreciation for Miss Connor as she comes. Afternoon, all. Hmm. Hubert Benjamin Hughes. I'm almost sure that his mother said, I will name him like my brother, my father, who is Robert Benjamin. Okay. This family was a closely knitted family. They cared for each other. Daddy did the ground work, and he was pleased to share what he got in the ground with his family. And uh, my brothers, when they rode a donkey in the valley to pick up stuff, they were happy to repose at Tatan Lainey's 
Linus, house, and be refreshed. They lived very cordial, deep rooted family. Many of them, Tanta and Hannah, Tanta and Lizzie, Uncle Calvin, Uncle Ruben, all lived in unity. I would take this moment to extend my condolences to the immediate family. But we know that we have hope of him. We are so thankful that when he came home from Colombia, he had a transformed life. He knew Jesus as his personal savior. And that is the most important thing. I was so happy. I was so happy. And I would like to say that many of the people, the family who would have liked to be here this evening are not here, but they hail from Aruba, Wyoming, Aronica, and uh, Maisie in St. Kitts, she would have loved to be here. She loves Hubert and Hubert loved her. Hubert used to enjoy coming down and having a piece of fish cooked by her. And uh, we were that family that were knit together. I loved Hubert. I did not always agree with him politically, but the family roots were there. We loved each other. I am so thankful, so thankful for him. I remember, by his passing, I remembered when Austin passed. And Austin was so much at peace. You could see the peace in the casket. And I believe he's the same. I believe. I would extend to every one of you, if you want to meet Hubert one day, it is so important, crucially important, that you too have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Know him as your personal savior. One simple prayer, Lord, be merciful unto me, a sinner, and save me. Have confidence that you know him. And when this life here on earth is over, you'll be able to meet him as a pleasing savior and not an angry judge. Time is important. Time is running out. Things are happening. We see that his return is at hand. Let us be ready. God bless you all. Thank you, Sister Hodge. At this time, I'm going to call Sister Con Maybe I'm speaking prophetically <laughs> for this. Okay. We'll call on Brother Derek. And afterwards, we'll have Sister Lang to do her bit. And after Sister Lang, Shanoi and Sandra will do their tribute. We trust so far that the family has been comforted and spanned inspired by the tributes spoken and sung this evening. Very pleasant, sir. Uh, good evening. My immediate condolences to the Hughes family. Kind of remind you, it's not how tall you are, it's not how short you are, but it's how smart you are. <laughs> Back in time, the Apostle Paul sat at the feet of a gentleman named Gamaliel. And the Apostle Paul learned quite a bit from that gentleman. Through the passage of time, a young man by the name of Timothy, he sat at the feet of the Apostle Paul. And when the Apostle Paul was exiting the scene, he said, I fought a good fight. But he said to Timothy, and the things that thou hast learned of me, he says, commit those to faithful men who will do likewise. A very important word there in the Greek, commit means to deposit to faithful men. I want to just read to you a little excerpt from a book that I'm attempting, the transcript. It's 
book is entitled, The March to Freedom, The Plight of the Black Man. And in this short excerpt, you're going to hear a little bit of the tone of our dearly beloved brother, former Chief Minister, Mr. Hughes. The striking waves of change on the ocean's surface present an array of patterns. The rolling thunder of the heavens above and beyond alter the atmosphere. The move to be a free people did not come without the challenges. The once primitive became prominent and the submissive that became sustained had yet another episode. Shattered, still sheltered. As the passage of time brought relative change, there remained a political and foreign affairs ingredient that proved a thorn in the flesh. The establishment, who for centuries thrived on the helplessness and hopelessness of the black man, could not easily walk away from the ideology and philosophy of master and slave. It was endemic. The shattering element was split. Not only did the peasants' comfort zone were rattled, so was that of the established order. For at some point, justice for the oppressed had to yield to the uncertain fate, F-A-T-E, of injustice for those who were left behind. At some point, so here, Mandela Long Walk to Freedom and Colin Powell's American Journey are testimony, are testament that the black man's plight continue on a path that ends in victory. Mandela comes across as one of those who bore the initial struggle, long walk, those words oozing out, those words indicative of peril and devastation of the blacks in South Africa back in the day, who fought long and hard for dignity and for self. Long walk speaks of volumes of dangers, setbacks, uncertainty, hopelessness that had to be endured. That was indeed an era like none other. The status quo was tested, resilience nurtured, and faith matured, though shattered, still sheltered. The Colin Powell American's journey present a picture, those pictures, those frames, was those things that Mr. Hughes fought for. He spoke of. The experience emulating shows that the black man had come a long way, but there was still yet uncharted waters. The deceased, I sat at his feet. Many Sundays when he sat with the late pastor Ambrose, I stayed in the shadows. And I eased up his stairs and he would speak to me. And he would encourage me to move on and develop myself. In 1990 and 91, I attended the College of Technology in Denver, Colorado as a result of Mr. Hughes trotting me along. In 1994 and 95 again, and Honorable Elevett Hughes is here, pointed me to the Red River Community College in Winnipeg, Manitoba, in Canada, where I did educational studies. And one day, after I came back and several years had passed, Mr. Hughes says, Derek, what are you doing for yourself? He said, you need to at least get a first degree. And I end up in Bolton, Lancashire, in England, the University of Bolton, where I got my bachelor's in education with strengths in vocational and technical education and training, which I f still fight for. Ladies and gentlemen, to the immediate family again, Mr. Hughes was to me like Paul was to Gamaliel, and Timothy was to, to Paul. I love you all. That's my take, and I'm just excited to be here. And I want to continue to live that legacy that Mr. Hughes has left. Oh, by the way, Greg Hughes here was one of my students. Small deposit, great man. My students must be better than I am. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pastor Gums. Now, just a little aside, you know, when you came to the mic, it wasn't, you know, it was a bit tall. You said it's not how tall you are, or how short you are, but how smart you are. But here's a third dimension. It's how smarter you could be, because I thought you had some hydraulic shoes you could just step up to the mic <laughs> instead of bringing it down. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's put your hands together for Sister Jeanette Lang, who is going to okay, grace good. us with a song. Good afternoon, everyone. A father, a brother, all that you could ever think 
this man is, he really is a father to me, my children, my family at home, at large. You know, I see the crowd just sitting like that. I'm, I'm, this is not the song that I'm going to sing. This is the one that I'm going to sing. I hope we walk the last mile together. Hand in hand, we will see the promised land. We've been to a lot of bad times, but our love is forever. And I hope we walk the last mile together. I'm kind of homesick for a country to which I've never been before. No sad goodbye will there be spoken. For time won't matter, time won't matter anymore. Beulah land, I am longing for you. And someday on the be 
Come on, let's give some more for that browsing, beautiful, soul searching, soul touching delivery. Thank you, Sister Jeanette. We have another item in song by Shanoi and Sandra. Let's welcome them as they, they come. Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of our families who hail from the eastern end of the island, we too share and express in our condolences to the Hughes family and by extension to all the residents of Angola. And we pray and hope that the song that we are about to sing will be a blessing to you. I pray you'll be our eyes and watch us where we go and help us to be wise in times when we don't know. Oh, let this be. When we lose our way, lead us to a place, guide us with your grace to a place where. Just like every child, 
needs to find a place. Guide us with your grace. Give us faith so we'll be saved. Needs to find a place. Guide us with your grace. Give us faith so we'll be What words can adequately describe such a beautiful and graceful performance? Let's hear it. I think to again, uh, Sandra and Shanoi, another three minutes allocated for you. Oh, beautiful. Truly, Anguilla is blessed in so many ways. The talent that we have. Amen. Amen. May God continue to bless you all. May he continue to prosper your ministry in song. Amen. And now we have another superstar group. I know it, Don and Desri, Desri and Don, the two Ds, D2, whatever you want to call them. But they are here. Uh, let's give it up for them as they render their item as well. Before I sing, or we sing, let me say very good afternoon to all who are gathered here this evening. I have nothing to say much about Hubert. Hubert was my friend, I loved him. And whatever I had to say to Hubert, I call him Hubert, I call him Chief. I call him, um, my wife, she always called him Pappy. Is that so funny? Yeah, Pops, whatever. We, we loved him and we, we um, told him exactly what we had to tell him when he was alive. So in his death, I have nothing to say about him. I think, I think we got it all mixed up, folks. We must tell people what we have to tell them while they are alive and they can hear it. Hug your families. Tell them you love them. Be there for them. Don't wait until they're dead to tell them you love them and say ill things about them and say good things about them. You never tell them when they was alive. It's no good. I tell you, Hubert, Chief, he never came to East End unless he came by my house. And we had a good time at home. The song we want to sing this evening is not for you, but he's gone. But I can guarantee you, you can do one thing. You can prepare yourself to meet him because he made it right. So you prepare yourself to meet him. Amazing grace, how sweet the song. My mouth is big. <laughs> Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saves a wretch like me.
Thank you so much, Don and Desiree, for reminding us of God's continued grace and sustaining grace. Ladies and gentlemen, the evening is moving on, and I trust you are enjoying yourselves. You're being refreshed and inspired by the items this evening. Again, I remind us all that there are some refreshments uh, at the back, so afterwards we won't disperse as we sometimes normally do after these functions, but we'll stay together, fellowship, interact, and remember our dear brother and friend. We have some more tributes. Lena Hoyong, are you here? You are? Wonderful. Cardinal Connor, you are here. Grace Christopher? All right. Okay, so in that order, Sister Lena, we ask you to come forward. Yes, and again, you know, as the evening is moving on, we remind us about the time limit for the tributes. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I have something written, but I think it's best I speak from the heart. And short, teacher Norma. I am well aware that I could speak a book, but I'm going to be short. I grew up knowing Hubert. As a matter of fact, I born meeting Hubert as part of our family. And we had a bond from a child to the hour of his death. You see, Hubert's mother and was my mother's aunt. And there's a unique story she told us all about Hubert. He was very special to her as she looked at him. And then she worked for the opportunity she got to become his godmother her first godchild. So Hubert and her had a special bond beyond cousins. The other thing I knew about Hubert, and I never call him Hubert, first time I'm calling him Hubert really, was that he and Uncle Arundel were two Buncombe Sark cousins. 
that you see them as brothers. So in growing up, how to differentiate, I call one uncle, and I ended up calling him uncle. He treated me as a niece, way beyond a cousin. And all through my life, Hubert has been part and parcel of the input. He was a real person and lived a real life. Tell it as it is. But he never, he'll give you some harsh words, yes. But he never turn you down, you can overcome. And he was one who would give you that direction. I suffered many of his pain. Calling him uncle throughout the much of government I was blamed to be his niece. And if you all said talk too long and I talk too much, they used to say, here he was going there. But not that the things he said and the way he guide you on, I will just try to rehash some of the things and get out of here. Hubert, legacy, if we have to look at it, he was one of commitment to the development of Anguilla. He, in fact, was a realist, one who was full of knowledge, and he read widely. If we want to know our past, he said we must know our history to define our culture. He never was afraid. And I remember his road to politics in 1961 when we had that election that he was running for. A squabble came after church at the Road Methodist Church. He was coming out of church. He was blamed to be a bratter. And so the other side met him at the church, and he didn't flinch. He lost the election. We had the revolution. It's not that he didn't believe Anguilla shouldn't go on the road to independence. It's not that he didn't believe that we were not able to do it. But he felt it was that we as a people, a resilient set of people from Anguilla, needed to be educated and to become fully embraced in what was happening. And as I grew and studied the history of the Caribbean, I don't think I get much of the geography from MacPherson. I got it from Mr. Hughes. I also can look back at him in relating to us of his travels on the sea. He said to us, he said to me, you're talking about writing a social impact assessment on the dolphins? Do you know what is the dolphins? He said the purpose. The purpose fish is the dolphins that we crave today. He also reminded me that we all make mistakes, but never stay down. You must be able to twin your mistakes and come again and be a better person for it. 
No man is perfect. Another point he made very clear was that Hubert did not live for himself. He lived for the nation, the community, the village, his friends, and for all. I could very well remember in 1998. Okay. I was transferred to the chief minister's office. And that was one of the last two years he had very hard before 2010. That was the period when Anguilla was supposed to become part of CARICOM. And when his own people turned against him, he came across the room and he said, you're going Barbados Wednesday. I said, going where? He said, I cannot go. Therefore, you must go. I said, but Uncle, I can't go. I don't know about that. You have to go. He outlined what is expected and go, and Anguilla will become an associate member of CARICOM. I did, and I brought it back home to him. It was not only that in which you felt proud about. I was sent on a long holiday to the States and came back. Yes, I understand. But we need to ring the bell for this. Even though Hubert was in the opposition, I brought home the idea of after school education. And we took it to Blowing Point, Road South. And we had no place to house the program. We said we better go and get Mr. Hughes to talk to Kofi. And we went. The next morning he said, you have the building. Go ahead. And if Anguilla politicians had never done a bipartisan program, was the launching of after school program in Anguilla. And it came through because of Mr. Hubert Benjamin Hughes. I just, I, I read no more. Yeah, no, I have to do no because I have several. In closing, let me say, that as Mr. Hughes has gone, let it be known that he was honest, he was true, he was kind. May his soul rest in eternal peace and he live on in glory. And if we continue on the road that he has taken making it well with his savior, we too shall meet him in the great beyond. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Lena. Moving right along, we have Mr. Cardinal Connor, and we invite him to do his tribute. After which, we'll have Clara representing the Spanish community and we wait for her after Mr. Connor. Good evening. The first thing I would like to do is um, a sobering thought. The first thing I would like to do is a sobering thought and eventually you would understand exactly why I've chosen to do that first. It says, today is a day for a new beginning, a long and sobering thought. A time to reflect on life's bitter battles and the type of fight we have fought. A time to give thanks for many blessings. Time for a sobering thought. Not only to plan for new beginnings, but to reflect on what we ought. God in his mercy has blessed us 
Our lives he has given us free. And he has given us a conscience to choose whatever we want to be. He never planned a life of imprisonment, nor in slavery he destined us to be. He gave us seeds to be fruitful, to aspire as much as we can. And he gave us a conscience to measure our, our progress in life as we ran. He gave us a mirror's reflection through his life of the perils we face. And he gave us strength, fortitude, and wisdom to serenely progress with his grace. Life offers many challenges. Our sense of direction we face, but we move always in the right direction when first his principles we embrace. I'd like to say that um, Mr. Hughes is one who would give you opportunity. I, my training is in chemistry. I have a bachelor's degree in chemistry. And in 1984, I wanted to find out what I could have done one for Anguilla and one for the Virgin Islands. And at that time, the Virgin Islands was importing $3 million per month of sodium hydroxide. Now, if you understand what sodium hydroxide is, it's NaOH. But the salt that we have here, which makes Anguilla one of the richest countries in the world, is NaCl. And when you go back in history, and you listen to what Christ said, and he said, be the salt of the earth. It means that salt is precious. Salt is one of the most, salt has the most strength. And when it comes to um, making aluminum, you have got to use the sodium hydroxide. And the sodium hydroxide comes from the salt. So, Back in 1984, or probably later, later than 1984, I wrote a letter to Mr. Hughes on behalf of uh, Mr. Richardson and Mr. Hulliger. And um, Mr. Hughes saw the side fit to ask one of his leaders to investigate the possibility of allowing us to reap the salt. Now, at that particular point in time, the salt would have given um, 400,000 tons of salt per year would have given you $235 million a year. So Mr. Hughes gave us that opportunity. The problem that we had was that if we had taken it, one, we would have, uh, have to deal with asbestos. A second thing, we would have to deal with um, mercury. And the mercury would kill the fish. So it was, environmentally, it was not good. So we did not go with it. The point I'm trying to make, though, is that Anguilla is a very rich country, and we have got to be able to understand what we have and make the best of it. Um, another thing I would like to say is that a blended solution, a blended solution for SARS may one day come from the island herbs. If you know what cattle tongue is, then you would realize exactly how that can be um, accomplished. OK, so um, I'd like to talk basically to the politicians. And OK. And basically, what uh, this is just a poem dealing with the politicians. It says, in unity, uh, in unity there's strength, that we all know. But love is a powerful seed when the leaders have chosen to sow. That's S-E-W. The blended colors of ice, gold, and blue to cover a beacon, boat, lighthouse, so the island dream of unity may be true. United we stand, divided we may fall. Mr. Hughes was delighted when for unity he called. That's on the, 14th, uh, on the 15th of October last, the 16th of October last. So it says, no more, he said, no more elections. 
he said no more elections was what he thought is best. He wanted to put years of fighting to rest. Fighting continued for 53 years. A dose of infighting has brought many families to tears. The Hughes-Foy blend has brought the fighting to an end. Foy is a white Brit brother, a thoughtful island blender. The seeds of a pear is just like a heart. Its two factions are united from the start. Acts of politics are changing. The tit for tat may and should not last. Division and infighting are simply a thing of the past. 10, 15, 2020, that is the year that the um, parliamentary building was dedicated. 10, 15, 2020, that was a year for a sobering thought. 10, 16, 2020, that is the year for the secession of the infighting and everything like that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Connor, for your thought-provoking poem and message. We now have Clara representing the Spanish community. The, sorry, the, to be more politically correct, the Dominicano Dominican Communication. Communication. Community. <laughs> Buenas noches a los dominicanos. Estamos aquí para darle gracias por este hombre que fue bien bueno con nosotros. Vio su calling papá. Are you never here? The Spanish people calling papá? Papá lo llamábamos. You know why? Because in 1989, when I came here, we was the first. Okay. The immigration used to run me. Put you in jail in the night. They used to come every night, look, on Thursday. And Sister Nama, look at right here, God bless her, and he what use. Leave the door open. And we run from Spanish town. We went through a lot. And he would use, would fight with us. And the next day, he get up, and he go to Aranghul. They had a, a governor named Aranghul, and he used to go and defend us. He says it's not right. Those people come here because all our family went to Santo Domingo. And they come here, then fighting, then killing, then stealing. Why will not give them the right to live and work? That's why we used to call him Papa, because you both was humble. You both will come, and he had to sit down on the step. He sit down on the step, and when we have any problem, he both used to come and sit down there, talk with us. And the next day, he go and he do solution for us. That was, we were so close to Mr. Hughes, because he was a man, humble. Very humble, and he say, foreigners, he how very love for foreigners, reminded himself that he too went in other people's country. So that was the word. He all the time was close. They say, oh, they used to say, all kind of thing about Clara. You know what he what used was to me? A consular. He was a liar. He had a plaster for every soul. And every solution where I had, problem I had, I come by he would use. And I forget something, he would use, I forget. He would, yeah, he would leave from here, went to Santo Domingo, to get my business going because I was bringing furniture and he's on up in Antigua and, and all the places. He would just leave from here. This gonna stop, you see. You from Santo Domingo, you can't even know your country. He would leave from here, went on there and settled for I could get my furniture and all my stuff straight to Santo Domingo. That why I today, I know I miss somebody. I lose a friend. He was my friend. He was my father, not what the people and him used to say. He was somebody that we could have trust. No matter what situation, he was a, uh, the chief minister. And while he was the chief minister, he was humble. He couldn't sit down on the, on the step. And no matter who he be, he couldn't speak the Spanish. No, I don't know if he used to get involved in too much things. But he defend every Spanish people. And when he can't speak it, he said, Clara, come here, buddy. Now you learn the Spanish. How about you expect to be in Anguilla without learning the Spanish? But he's still going to run by we, by the immigration, by labor. 
Not every Spanish people are here. We are standing here today with our passport. We could say you would use. In 1995, when we went, you could have seen the Spanish people running all the road. You know why? Papa went. And he said, every one of you, and you will not leave from me. I will set like you. And he did. He was a man to his word. So I just pray that we will get a next, a next year or two. It's not so easy, so. But pray for heaven. Somebody have to take over this guy. We can't miss that man. He gone, but he must leave somebody in charge. Whoever it be, somebody who will love this foreigner and will love Anguilla with hope. He used to did. He love Anguilla with a heart. Never get charged you a dollar. But if you want to prosper and you need help, he will go wherever he has to go with you, he will go until you get what you want. But if you play, hey, I ain't there to play no, no, no time with you, no. If you ain't know what you're doing, don't make me lose my time. That was he. <laughs> don't make him lose no time. So in behalf of my family, every, I will miss that. Every, every day or every other day, he will go down there, get his coconut, he sit down, he talk, and I will miss that. Sister Nama, thank you. She used to leave her door open. When we run down there, you know my time we get arrested? And you don't know, but we run. So I pray that that don't come back again. You would use fight, and I pray. We used to run from Spanish song and hide ourselves. Nama leave the door open, and we run for our life because we didn't want to go. You understand? So I pray, honestly, that somebody will see the vision what you both had for the country and for the people. Thank you. Thank you, Clara, for that history lesson. I'm sure um, the media will kind of edit some of the content of that message. And um, some information remains censored uh, just for our ears. But um, it seems, Hayden, you might need to leave your door open to carry on the, the tradition. Uh, so let's share it for Hubert Hughes. Three cheers. Hip, hip. Hip, hip. Hip, hip, hip. Amen. Wonderful. Chris, you're up next. That's right. The Christopher ladies. Uh, come, welcome them as they come. We're almost to the end, ladies and gentlemen. In loving memory of the late Honorable Hubert Benjamin Hughes, a man for all seasons. He was honest, unselfish, beloved, educator, respected, trustworthy. He was a He was a dear, faithful, I can't see, no. Yes. No. He was a dear, faithful, and loving f friend to those who sought his wise, his wise counsel. He was a family man, a man of high esteem, who served unselfishly for many years. He was unwavering in the things he believed and spoke passionately about the evils of colonialism in his numerous forays against the tyrannical authoritarianism of British imperialism. Mr. Hughes was defiant in his defense of this nation and he sought and he sought diligently to promote the welfare and well-being of all its citizens. He was deeply concerned about the prospects for Anguilla and Anguillians at home and abroad. He admonished us repeatedly to strive for political and socio-economic independence. This nation owe him a great debt of gratitude, and we will miss him dearly. In conclusion, 
we wish to extend sincere condolences and prayerful support to teacher Norma and his children and all those who mourn his passing. May God continue to comfort us during this difficult time. May we always remember his outstanding legacy. May his soul continue to rest in perpetual peace. Please. And this is coming from Grace and Barbara and their families and our families. Thanks. Thank you so much. Marie Lang, are you here? Christabel? You're somewhere around? All right. After Christabel, we will have a special item by Roots Bingy, after which we'll have the vote of thanks, and then, of course, a fellowship. Oh, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and grief to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. The late Honorable Mr. Hubert Benjamin Hughes. He was our hero, that's for sure. And that's for all who didn't know. His name was H-U-B-E-R-T. Do you all know he was humble? Yes, he was. And were united with all of us in every way. He was a very brilliant, beloved husband, brother, uncle, father, father-in-law, grandfather, and friend. But don't you ever forget, he was extraordinary in all our lives and very respectful too in every way. Oh yes, he was trustworthy too, and that was so true. Now, Mr. Hughes has fallen asleep without goodbye, but memories of him will never die. Times may pass and fade away, but memories of him will forever stay. Well, as we all know now, in God's care, he is resting above. But in our hearts, he is resting with love. Let me say, while he was here on earth, his life and kind-hearted words of inspiration touched so many people who became his friends along the way. Now, that golden heart stop. Hard working hands is now at rest. God called him home to prove to us he only takes the best. He'll be, sh he'll be surely missed, and we all love him. So let his soul rest in peace and take his beauty sleep. And one day, if we all be true and faithful, we will meet him on that golden street. I must say my condolences to Teacher Norma and the rest of the family, including my son-in-law Greg, my daughter Chrislyn, and my grandchildren Malachi, Micah, and Micaiah. May Hubert Hill's soul rest in peace. <laughs> Okay, put your hands together again for Christabel. Can you remember the acronym? H, humble. U. All right. B. Brilliant. Extraordinary. Respectful. Trustworthy. Wonderful. I think very fitting for him. Ladies and gentlemen, just before... The Roots Bingy presents the final tribute for the evening. Those persons who are sitting in front of the bar area, we're asking you to clear that area because the food service will begin from the north through to the south. So in preparation, we're asking you to just find another location. And of course... The food service will be done expeditiously. We have for your eating pleasure, fish soup, chicken soup, and pumpkin soup. I believe they will be supported by rolls and other condiments, courtesy 
of Shane's Kitchens. So ladies and gentlemen, after Roots Binky, you're asked to assemble on the northern side of the bar area for service to proceed through to the southern side. Roots Binky, please take it away. Greetings, good afternoon. We are here today, good evening. We are here tonight to pay our tribute to a father, a man, our Chief Minister, the late Honorable Great Hubert Benjamin Hughes. I mean, Hubert, we was very close. Um, his works that he have done for Anguilla will live on in the hearts of all of us. It is up to us to carry on the fight. You know, um, it hurt me to see our people, you know, um, dying. It's a lot of hot in these times, and we got to come together. We all are here tonight. Could everybody hold hands, please, to show the respect and the love for Hubert Hughes, please? If you truly love him, hold hands, please. Let me hold hands now, please. Let's hold hands. 2013, I was awarded the badge of honor and this medal for my services as an athlete for Hubert Hughes. And I give thanks and praises for that. He never looked down on us. He looked up to us and respect us. And Anguilla, if we are to survive, we need to love each other now, respect each other, come together. It hurt me to see us divided, east and west, north and south. People, this is the time. If we don't do it now, Cha help us. Teacher Nama, I want you to stay strong. To the family, stay strong. Premier, stay strong. Anguilla, Stand strong in these times. God is speaking to us. Yes, don't look at us and watch us and scan us. Respect us. We are here to carry on this mission, to carry on this fight. I love my country. I love Anguilla. And we love Hubert Hughes. And for what he has done for us, he would live forever and ever. Let's live together for one's people. Let's do it. We're doing it for ourselves. For we, we're doing it for blessings. Peace. God, look over us and guide us, protect us, heal my land, heal my people, bring us together, bring us together. Peace. Roots Benge.
far I Everybody should know Some people don't know Some people don't know Everybody should know All right, Roots Bingy. They're going to continue, but just before that, I'm going to invite Hayden to do the vote of thanks. Antinoma, Michael and Verna send their condolences and best wishes and Godspeed and comfort during this time. Good night, everyone, and thank you all for coming out. Good to see Aunt Dorothy. Welcome home. She was in quarantine for a few days. Um, but be before I give the vote of thanks, um, so many memories um, was brought up today. Elvet Hughes, Mr. Hughes, he spoke about his animals. And he may not remember but as a youngster, he had a, a chicken farm over here where Laview now sits. And I would go over by him with his animals in the afternoon. And he gave me my first chicken. I don't know if he's still here and if he remembers that. You remember? And from that day to this day, I still have chickens. Red layer hens. And I was probably about 12 or 13 back then. And I'll be 50 this year, so that tells you, you know, how the influence of someone as a child can transcend into your adulthood and now into my senior years. Um, and also, um, I'm not a man who shed a tear, but when Clara was speaking, I shed a tear. Because I remember those days. I remember those days of Parsons and Williams um, who went a field and were returning home and the immigration Sylvester. I don't know if anybody remember that. And they were running them down and my father's doors were always open. And they would run and they would hide under our beds. And they would share beds with us because he believed that all of us were one people regardless of where you found yourself in the Caribbean. Because one of the things that we fail to understand is that we were all brought to this part of the world on the same ship. It's just that we are dropped off at different points. And you may have been in Dominica, or Jamaica, or Antigua, or Aruba, or St. Martin, or the Dominican Republic. But as long as you're a black man, you're an African. And someone spoke about the many books in our houses. And that is all we had. We didn't have any electricity as kids. We only had electricity. I think about 82 or 83. We didn't have electricity. We didn't have running water. But what we did have in the house was a lot of books. And I remember the first book that my father sat around that I read, and it was called How Europe Underdeveloped Africa by Walter Rodney. He didn't know I read that book. I was probably about 12 or 13 years old. And um, he also had Bibles. And uh, Janice, my cousin, she spoke of, of, of that book big Bible that included Apocrypha, and I read that as well. And I remembered when I took it from the house and took it down to the Hughes's, um, there was a $20 bill folded in that Bible, and that $20 bill is still folded in that Bible. <laughs> so in, 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 in that particular Bible, uh, the handwriting of Janice Hodge, and she may not be able to read her writing today, but back then her writing was legible. And in that Bible, it had a family tree. In that Bible, in the front pages of that Bible, the family have expanded significantly since then because that was probably thought of 40 years ago. So I just want to say that there's a lot of memories that came up here today. And I, I just want to close by saying this, to, before I go to the vote of thanks. I remember in 2010 when my father was elected to office and I was made a parliamentary secretary. And 
I was sitting in the office in this Dominicano Anguillian, I like to call them Dominicano Anguillians, um, came to the office and he had an old passport of a Hughes lady. And he said, do you know who she is? And I said, no. He said, this is your aunt, your father's aunt, who went to the Dominican Republic. So I learned that we had family members who went to the Dominican Republic and never came back. And so all of us have family in the diaspora. So when we talk about who is Anguillian and who is not Anguillian, we must understand that our blood and our bloodlines is throughout the Caribbean. And there was a time when we were nomads across the world, nomads across the Caribbean. We went to Port Amboy, New Jersey. We went to Slough. We went all over the world. We went to Aruba. The Anguillians who were born in Cuba, in the Dominican Republic in particular, San Pedro de Macorís. And these are Anguillians too. And some of them have never been to Angola, may never be to Angola, but they are Anguillian too. And so when I hear people talking about the foreigners and the foreigner this and the foreigner that, and they're not born here, I like to remind people that I too was not born here, and neither was my mother, but the contribution that my mother has made to this country and the contribution that I believe that I make to this country demonstrates that I am Anguillian too. So I just want to say that in closing, before I go to the vote of thanks, um, Andrew Niles who was able to give me all of those persons who contributed. And uh, so I go into the vote of thanks and um, I'd like to first thank Andrew Niles uh, for mastering the mic. And just to remind him that we no longer have a chief minister, but we have a premier. <laughs> and as of this date, he's the best premier that Anguilla has ever had. I would also like to thank Pastor Hugo Brooks uh, for the opening prayer, Reverend Wilmoth Hodge for the words of comfort, Titanium Audio and Visual Gaff, Stage Millennium Songs, Web, Ivor Gums, Four Seas and I Rentals, Rental Chairs and Tents and Podium, Ming's Grocery, Clara, for the water and drinks, the Deco Agge, Agnita Hodge, the South Hill Community Club for the use of the field, Rosmond Davis of Calypso Charters for the ice, Shagzy, Shane Hughes, my, my road dog, where is he? I don't know where he is, but Chef Hughes for the catering, and Morales Limited for the portable restrooms, um, for those persons who have helped, Gretel Hughes, Cara Gums, I got to thank Gretel for giving my brother a wife. <laughs> Christabel, sorry, for giving my brother a wife because without her, her he would be like me, single. <laughs> Gretel Hughes, Cara Gums, Christabel Connor, Geraldine James, who's always been there, who we can consider family. And she wasn't born here, but Every day you pass, she's always on the porch with my mother and can definitely be considered family. Radio Anguilla, Roots Bingy. Thank you, thank you for having us. Yabba Pat. Yes, I, I remember those days. A lot of people <laughs> don't remember that, Yabba Pat. Yes. And all those who assisted and gave their tributes, uh, we thank you. Uh, I, I want to say and give my apologies as I leave the stage to Betty Romney of Blowing Point. I did not deliver the flag, but I saw you today. So thank you again for coming out and for sharing this special time with us. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in addition to Lloyd streaming, uh, Titanium Sounds also providing some streaming as well. Once again, thank you all for coming out. Do enjoy the rest of the evening with Roots Bingy. Refreshments are being provided. Do stay safe, get home safely, and we'll see you again sometime later this week for the rest of the...
public activities. One love, one heart, give thanks and praise to the Lord, and I will feel all right. Singing, let's get together and feel all right. Don't worry about the thing. 